the traditional understanding of the classical tradition was uh, that the ancients kind of occupied the high ground and then other people with varying degrees of skill quoted from them, cited them, uh, parodied them, whatever. And this was useful enough as far as it went, but recently there has been a much greater emphasis on a kind of reciprocal relationship between the later versions and the ancient versions, so that in some ways the existence of Romare Bearden's Odyssey changes our understanding of Homer. And I think that's not trivial. That's, uh, it, it is a way that these things keep, stay alive. You know, you don't want them just sort of ossified and entombed or, you know, put in a vacuum sealed display case where, you know, people go to admire but then forget about them. You want them out there kind of with us. And that to me is one of the things that is so exciting about Bearden's project and about the, uh, the extraordinary range of emotion and imagination that he brought to it. Uh, I really, I was telling somebody, uh, a friend of mine was asking me, what does it make you think of? And I said, I don't know, it, it's a little bit like, it would be like hearing Charlie Parker play Chopin, you know, it would just change, <laughs> you know. Uh, and that's not, not a parody, it's, it's an homage, it's a reinterpretation, it's a rethinking and a revivifying. It's not that, you know, that, that pianists aren't going to keep playing Chopin, of course, you know, but if you get somebody, set, set somebody like Charlie Parker loose on it, and it'll change the rules. That's what I like about it. Homer's taught here in the core of Lit Hum and so In what ways can Bearden or a Bearden bring a text of a dead white man to life for someone who may not be white or a man? Well, I think that's the, that's the challenge, isn't it? You know, and it's one of the, the great things about a great artist like Bearden is that he's not providing what one might think of as illustrations for which the ancient text is a caption. There really is much more of that kind of dynamic interplay that we were talking about. And there are some scenes that Bearden creates which allude to, but certainly don't replicate anything that is in the Odyssey. And so that's where he's allowing or he's giving himself the freedom to interpret and to think about it. And so everything from the something as fundamental uh, as the change in complexion of the goddess who saves Odysseus. She's not the white goddess anymore. She's black. And uh, this, I think, it's not a betrayal. It's wonderful. And it might give somebody who might otherwise think of the Odyssey as Oh, man, just something that boring majority culture thinks of as high, you know, high art. No, it's got something much more vital to it. So I think, I was reading somewhere, I wish I could remember where, that I think Bearden was saying that his hope was that these pictures would make the Odyssey open up to somebody in Benin. And I think they would. It's a little bit like what uh, Derek Walcott did with his fantastic poem, Ameros, where you know, he sets Homeric-like characters on a Caribbean island and turns them into a community of fisher folk. And it's that same sort of boldness and um, uh, opening the windows and letting some fresh air blow through. That's a great uh, reference. Are you, are you coming back for the opening of the show here? I'm, I hope to. Yeah, I'd like to come down for it, and uh, I have actually, I saw the, the exhibition that they did at the D.C. Moore Gallery here in New York when they did that the first time, and uh, it was stunning. And there, there really is, no matter how, how faithful replicas are, there's, you know, you know as well as I do, there's nothing like seeing the original. And it's not just because of the sort of Benjaminian notion of the aura or anything like that. I mean, here, the, the, the scale, the actual, the way that you can feel Bearden's hand kind of moving these pieces of paper around on the collage and it's like, okay, that's where that's supposed to go. It's great. It's, uh, you know, it's such a pleasure. Your lecture tonight was so magnificent because you 
I think. many reasons, but you 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 illustrated it with beard and with with uh, illustrations from and beard and slides. Did you have that? And vase painting. And vase paintings. And I'm wondering, do you teach do you teach the Odyssey that that way? I try to, yeah, because I think that it is uh, the Odyssey. After all, was originally not read but sung, and. I mean, it, it wasn't read aloud by someone, or you know, were people sitting there reading it. Literacy in the ancient world was restricted only to the tiniest group of people. Instead, what you had was oral storytelling, and um, I try to convey that. And that's, you know, part of uh, this. This sort of visual storytelling has a, a kind of analogous power to to reinvigorate, as I say, and to to move one. You know, and then you come back to the text with this, and oh, that's. That's so cool. <laughs> I think that uh, the new understandings of classics or these presentations of classics, to my mind, they're most successful when they're most audacious. Uh, if you look at the sort of costume dramas, you know, where they try to recreate the Homeric world, uh, I haven't seen Troy. I've seen enough clips of it to make me feel that I've seen it. And okay, you know, but I think that it takes somebody to, to turn it around and to use Ezra Pound's famous phrase, make it new, uh, really to bring it back to life. That, uh, you know, the same way that Greek tragedy is so often treated with a kind of untoward reverence, you know. These were tough plays in front of a very demanding and very loud crowd. And they dealt with the major issues of the time. And so I think one, one has to have the courage to both respect the original and to say, okay, I'm going to take it somewhere else. I think what Bearden brings is a unique sensibility to this poem that has been so honored, so revered, so repeated so often and for so long. And what Bearden did is take a look at it and say, I can do something with this. And in that regard, he is uh, sort of the uh, kind of an archetypal modern artist. And he has both the tradition and the innovation that, that come together and make this something wholly new and, to my mind, really quite wonderful. I just don't get, I don't ever get tired of looking at these pictures. Is there some systematic way where many of these great classic texts that are in Columbia's curricula, other curricula, that could be invigorated similarly? Like, can the whole canon be veered and not? Like, is there some way of doing that? I, I don't know. I think that's a tough call because obviously there were great, I mean, in Western art, there were great artists, you know, who drew on classical stories and mythology and uh, even history or you know, the whole range, if one may put it that way, of Greek and Roman experience. But um, I don't know that they could all be bearded I mean, Auden, uh, who has a particular attachment to Columbia in some ways, uh, you know, the, the Auden poems, uh, like the Musée des Beaux-Arts, where he talks about the Bruegel painting of the death of Icarus. I mean, you have this, this multiple, this sort of nesting, uh, stories and about suffering they were never never wrong the old masters how well they understood its human position and that's one of the things that i think we need to keep coming back to one of my favorite quotations was about this was actually given by one of the great late 19th early 20th century classicists named francis cornford and he said that the ancient works are like the constellations um, they're always the same and they're always changing and our understanding of them keeps evolving, keeps changing, and uh, they, they continue to live for us. Um, and we no longer think of the sun as the god Helios or the moon as the goddess Selene, or maybe not entirely, you know, but we, we can, you know. It's a, the, the, I think the more of these metaphors one has, the richer one's understanding is uh, no matter what one's dealing with. That's liberal arts. <laughs>